How's it going YouTube? So in this video, I just wanted to talk about Realsteady, GoPro's video smoothing software. And if you're not familiar, Realsteady has been used by professionals for years now, especially FPV professionals. And recently the program has been improved upon and updated. So I thought I'd make a video about it, just going through how to install it, how to use it, and my personal settings that I like to use when I record my FPV videos and pump it through the smoothing software. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do here is go to realsteady.com, just type GoPro Real Steady into Google, go here. And this is where it talks about, this is the part of the new update that they did. So it's a part of the new, uh, well, the old GoPro player app, but now it's actually a part of it before it used to be a separate application. So if you're on Windows, you can go to the Microsoft Store, or if you're on a Mac, then you can go to the App Store. So if you just go to the Microsoft Store, type in Real Steady or GoPro player, it comes up, it's the only result here. And um, you can just go right ahead and install that and you can see I already have it. So I'm gonna click open. Okay, so now we have it open. This is what it looks like on the main page. Um, you can click open media if you wanna, if you already have files from your GoPro on your computer, you can just pull them in that way. Otherwise you can actually just drag them in here, no problem. So under file, you have the kind of the same option, open or open recent. You can pull up a file that you just closed. You can save as, you can save your edit files from the GoPro player. And then there's also a batch exporter, which I'll briefly go over here. I'll explain how you actually export the files and what that process looks like. But this is where you can look at if you have queued up exports. So maybe you have multiple different files that you're trying to smooth and you wanna you know, seamlessly export them all at the same time so you can like step away from your computer and just let it go. This is where it'll show all of them and you can individually click on them and it'll tell you the resolution that you wanna export it at, the codec and the quality, and whether or not you have Real Steady enabled or if it's just exporting the video. So here you can change your view as well. You can just go into full screen and then there's a few other mouse controls and resolution and stuff like that, which is grayed out for me right now since I'm not in full screen. And then most of the edit things, actually you have to have a video pulled up. And if you find that your real study is running slow or whatever, if you open up settings and then graphics device, you can actually make sure if you if you have a physical graphics card, then you can select that and it'll help speed up the processing. And then right here is where you can actually purchase or log into your real study and of course the help tab. So let's open up something and just show you what it kind of looks like. So here's a little video clip from when I went to the train tracks just recently. So on the bottom left, you have a volume control. And for, honestly, for FPV stuff, I pretty much just kill the volume because it just sounds annoying. So now actually, if we go back up to the edit tab, you can see we can extract current frame. And this is basically like a screenshot of your video, but it's uh, pretty high quality. And the same thing can be done down here um, next to the little scissor icon, the, the picture lift icon here will also give you basically a screen grab. So now we can scrub down here in this bottom bar and it's pretty fast. With this little blue icon down here, it actually is rendering the real steady stabilized video in real time so if we wanted to kind of preview what it looked like so you can see here I'm right here I'm sort of flying over the tracks so I can just press the space bar and get like a good preview of what the smoothing looks like so if I'm happy with that then I might do something like start the uh, the start of the trim here and I click the little blue scissor and then it starts it and then uh, maybe I want it to go until I get underneath this uh, overpass so then I close the trim there. So then this is the part that it will export. And then I could press the check mark. And don't worry, usually the icon's not this big, but I have a weird 4K to 1080p scaling issue. So just ignore that. <laughs> so then what you could do is either create it as a new trim document. So basically what that would do is just take the same video you have here, but it'll make the entire timeline just what you've selected with the scissors. Or you can just go ahead and export it. And usually I, I don't really I don't really mess with anything else. I just kind of export it. So here are the export settings. And for me, this was filmed in 5K, 5.3K. So that's why I have this resolution. You can actually export it as a different resolution if you'd like to, but for the most part, I, I would just leave it how it is. Make sure you have real steady checked on if you have it if you've already purchased it and activated it and then you have three different codec formats that you can use h.264 is what we usually use just for like uploading to youtube and stuff like that however it is a bit more of a, a compressed video codec so i wouldn't necessarily recommend it if you were going to then throw it into like premiere pro or final cut or anything like that i would actually use either hevc or even cineform is going to be your best option and you can actually change the uh, the level of the quality 
quality and really high is like as much as you need to do because if you go higher than that, it's it takes up a lot of the hard drive space. But if you're just gonna upload this like straight to YouTube or whatever, then um, you can just do HEVC or really H.264 is the most commonly used format. So then you would just click next and then you can name it and export it to a folder. So pretty simple. Or you can send it to the queue, like I mentioned before, and here's your batch exporter. So we can have multiple of these and we can actually tweak the settings even after we've already made all our adjustments. So this is sometimes where I, I like to do a custom smoothness and custom cropping speed. Usually they're linked together at like 50. And then when you would adjust them, they change like this together. But what I actually prefer to do is go to smoothness of maybe like 30 or 40, and then a cropping speed of like 70 or so. You don't wanna go too fast, because otherwise it really just, it like punches in and out, it looks really unrealistic. But if you go too slow, it'll stay more cropped in for more of the time. So if you're doing a really long, more of a straight shot, then doing a slow cropping speed is going to look fine it, it'll because it's already it doesn't need to crop in that much and it's going to look really smooth but if you have a really large bank turn before you go into a smoother shot then it's going to really punch in and it's going to take a long time to come back out so in my opinion it just it, it kind of degrades the video too much because it punches in so far you can figure out what works for you but honestly i like it at like 70 i don't really notice it that much when I'm just flying regularly. And I like to have the lens correction all the way up because it looks kind of funky if you um, if you leave it all distorted. Also, sorry if you hear some of that noise in the background. There's like a, I don't, I don't even know, like a little forklift driving around. So I'm trying to not talk when it goes by, but it's hard, so. So yeah, I'll go back and this is what the, um, you can control the settings in real time down here by this um, the little GoPro camera. So these are the basic settings and this is the linked smoothness like I was talking about. If it's just linked together, you can also check on horizon leveling. Don't forget to hit apply, which it works pretty well, but again, you're gonna have to deal with a lot of punching in because it, it can only do so much with the video you get. So yeah, horizon leveling is pretty cool. It could be a good option for you if you want something a little different. It almost makes it look like it's actually a train on the tracks or something like that. But I kind of like having the rocking video look that FPV gets you, so I will leave that off. And if you go under the advanced settings, you can do what I did before and unlink by clicking this button, you can unlink the cropping speed and the smoothness, but I still tend to leave it at a similar way that it would be when it's linked because they're kind of ratios of each other, as you can see. You can also check on a static crop, so it will only crop in a certain amount, which is really interesting. So if you want your smoothness at say like uh, a 40 and you don't want your crop to change um, the cropping speed, you can leave it here, press apply, we'll see what that looks like. So you can see it's a lot more punched in, right? But that's because it has to go to the most punched in part of the entire video to make sure that it's a consistent crop. So I wouldn't really recommend this unless you have a pretty smooth video already. And I just wanna kinda hash over a few little details about this product. So it only works with a GoPro Hero 5 or newer. And some, a feature they recently added is if you use HyperSmooth in your shot, you can still put Real Steady over the HyperSmooth. It's kinda like a double, double smoothing. But in my opinion, it just, Again, to get the smoothing, they have to crop into the video a lot to cut the edges so that it, it looks seamless. But in my opinion, it, it, you end up getting this really punched in video if you double stack it. So I would just, if you know you're gonna use Real Steady, just turn Hyper Smooth off and just fix it later. And you can record vertical, you can record four by three, you can record 16 by nine. It just kind of works for everything now. Although if you do run vertical with the GoPro, I physically turn it sideways in lock orientation on the GoPro. And then when it comes into real steady, it looks like it's 16 by nine. So when I go to edit it, I just flip it over basically. And that's how I do that. And it works just as well. So to get real steady activated on here, you actually have to purchase it through GoPro on their site. And then you will get an activation key and you'll, you can go into this top area where it says real steady and you'll be able to log in basically and it'll ask for your, I think email or username and your activation code. And for whatever reason, about every maybe three to five times that I open the GoPro player, it'll just sign me out and there's no way that I can log back in for some reason. So what I end up doing is uninstalling the program and reinstalling it and then it just logs me back in. So something to note if you are having that problem where it, it You'll, you'll load up 
the GoPro player and then basically you'll log in and um, down here in the bottom right, it'll have like a lightning bolt icon over the GoPro and it'll say like, oh, we're showing you real steady stabilization, but you actually don't have it purchased on your account. Yeah, just uninstall it and reinstall it and it'll come back. And I don't know, it's just a gimmicky thing that's going on right now. I'm not sure what's wrong with that, but that's, it works every time if I just uninstall it and do that. So yeah, there's a quick fix for you. I mean, yeah, so that's basically it. I just wanted to cover the basics of real steady and just show you guys um, the ins and outs of it. I'm sure I missed a couple things, but I just wanted to do a quick video over it and just get it out there so you guys can just load it up, log in and get going with it and start using it. It's pretty user friendly. It's not too hard to get into, but for someone who hasn't dealt with it before and doesn't really know how the GoPro system works, um, hopefully this will help you a little bit. If it did help you or if you have any other questions, uh, make sure to like and comment below whatever in input you have. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see ya.